Kalama Sutta. The Buddha's Chart of Free Inquiry. Translated from the Pali by Soma Thero. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Preface The instruction to the Kalamas Kalama Sutta is justly famous for its encouragement of free inquiry. The spirit of the Sutta signifies a teaching that is exempt from fanatism, bigotry, dogmatism and intolerance. The reasonableness of the Dhamma, the Buddha's teaching is chiefly evident in its welcoming careful examination at all stages of the path to enlightenment. Indeed, the whole course of training for wisdom culminating in the purity of the consummate one, the Arahat, is intimately bound up with examination and analysis of things internal. The eye and visible object, the ear and sounds, the nose and smells, the tongue and taste, the body and tactical impressions, the mind and ideas. Thus, since all phenomena have to be correctly understood in the field of the Dhamma, insight is operative throughout. In this Sutta, it is active in rejecting the bad and adapting the good way in the extracts given below in clarifying the basis of knowledge of conditionality and arahatship. Here, it may be mentioned that the method of examination found in the Kalama Sutta and in the extract sites here have sprung from the knowledge of things as they are and that the Tenor of these methods are impiled in all straight thinking. Further, as penetration and comprehension, the constituents of wisdom are the result of such thinking, the place of critical examination and analysis in the development of right vision is obvious. Where is the wisdom or vision that can descend? all of a sudden untouched and uninfluenced by critical thought. The Kalama Sutta which sets forth the principles that should be followed by a seeker of truth and which contains a standard things are judged by belongs to a framework of the Dhamma. The four solaces thought in the Sutta point out the extent to which the Buddha permits suspense of judgment in matter beyond normal cognition. The Solesa saw that the reason for a virtuous life does not necessarily depend on belief in rebirth or retribution, but on mental well-being acquired through the overcoming of greed, hate and delusion. More than 50 years ago, Monk D. Conway, the author of my pilgrimage to the wise men of the East, visited Colombo. He was a friend of Ponnambalam Ramanathan, then Solicitor General of Ceylon, and together with him, Conway went to the Vidyodhya Pirivana to learn something of the Buddha's teaching from Hikadwe Sri Sumangala Nayaka Thero, the founder of the institution. The Nayaka Thero explained to them the principles contained in the Kalama Sutta and at the end of the conversation Ramanathan whispered to convey, 
is it not strange that you and i who come from far different religious and regions should together listen to a sermon from the buddha in favor of that free thought that independence of traditional and fashionable doctrines which is still the vital principles of human development convey yes and we with the kalam princess pronounce his doctrines good supplementary text friend savit apart from faith apart from liking apart from what has been acquired by repeated hearing apart from specious reasoning and from a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over i know this i see this decay and death are due to birth sanyutta nikaya 12 68 here a bhikkhu having seen an object with the eye knows when greed hate and delusion are within greed hate and delusion are in me he knows when greed hate and delusion are not within greed hate and delusion are not in me because how these things to be experienced through faith liking what has been acquired by repeated hearing specious reasoning or a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over no venerable sir because this even is the way by which a bhikkhu apart from faith liking what has been acquired by repeated hearing specious reasoning or a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over declares realization of knowledge thus i know that birth has been exhausted the celibate life has been lived what must be done has been done and there is no more of this to come sanyutta nikaya 35 152 the instruction to the kalamas the kalamas of kesaputta go to see the buddha one i heard thus once the blessed one while wandering in the kosala country with a large community of bhikkhus entered town of the kalama people called kesaputta the kalamas who were inhabitants of kesaputta heard reverend gotama the monk the son of the sakyans has while wandering in the kosala country entered kesaputta the good repute of the reverend gotama has been spread in this way indeed the blessed one is thus consummate fully enlightened endowed with knowledge and practice sublime nova of the worlds peerless guide to tameable men teacher of divine and human beings enlightened blessed he makes known this world with its beings its maras and its brahmas and the group of creatures with its monk and brahmins and its divine and human beings which he by himself has through direct knowledge understood clearly he sets forth the dhamma good in the beginning good in the middle good in the end possessed of meaning and the letter and complete in everything and he proclaims the holy life that is perfectly pure seen such consummate one is good indeed to then the kalamas who were inhabitants of kesaputta went to where the blessed one was on arriving there are some paid homage to him and sat down on one side some exchange greetings with him and after the ending of cordial memorable talks 
sat down on one side. Some saluted him, raising their joined palms, and sat down on one side. Some announced their name and family and sat down on one side. Some, without speaking, sat down on one side. The Kalamas of Kesaputta asked for guidance from Buddha. 3. The Kalamas who were inhabitants of Kesaputta sitting on one side said to the Blessed One, There are some monks and Brahmins, venerable sir, who visit Kesaputta. They expound and explain only their own doctrines. The doctrines of others they despise, revile, and pull to pieces. Some other monks and Brahmins to Venerable Sir come to Kesaputta. They also expound and explain only their own doctrines. The doctrines of others they despise, revile, and pull to pieces. Venerable Sir, there is doubt. There is uncertainty in us concerning them. Which of these reverend monks and Brahmins spoke the truth and which falsehood? The criterion for rejection. For it is proper for you, Kalamas, to doubt, to be uncertain. Uncertainty has arisen in you about what is doubtful. Come, Kalamas, do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing, no upon tradition, no upon rumor, no upon what is in a scripture, no upon surmise, no upon an axiom, no upon specious reasoning, no upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over, no upon another's seeming ability, no upon the consideration. The monk is our teacher. Kalamas, when you yourselves know these things are bad, these things are blamable, these things are censured by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to harm and ill. Abandon them. Greed hate and delusion. 5. What do you think, Kalamas? Does greed appear in a man for his benefit or harm? For his harm, venerable sir. Kalamas, being given to greed and being overwhelmed and vanquished mentally by greed, this man takes life, steals, commits adultery and tells lies. He prompts another to, to do likewise. Will that be conducive for his harm and ill for a long time? Yes, Venerable Sir. 6. What do you think, Kalamas, does hate appear in a man for his benefit or harm? For his harm, Venerable Sir. Kalamas, being given to hate and being overwhelmed and vanquished mentally by hate, this man takes life, steals, commits adultery, and tells lies. He prompts another to, to do likewise. Will that be conducive for his harm and ill for a long time? Yes, Venerable Sir. 7. What do you think, Kalamas? Does delusion appear in a man for his benefit or harm? For his harm, Venerable Sir. Kalamas being given to delusion and being overwhelmed and vanquished mentally by delusion, this man takes life, steals, commits adultery, and tells lies. He prompts another to, to do likewise. Will that be conducive for his harm and ill for a long time? Yes, Venerable Sir. 8. What do you think, Kalamas? Are these things good or bad? Bad, Venerable Sir. Blamable or not blamable? Blamable, ven Venerable Sir. Censured or praised by the wise? Censured, Venerable Sir. Undertaken and observed, 
do these things lead to harm and ill or not or how does it strike you undertaken and observed these things lead to harm and ill thus it strike us here nine therefore did we say kalama what was said thus come kalamas do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing or upon tradition no upon rumor no upon what is in a scripture no upon surmise no upon an axiom no upon specious reasoning no upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over no upon another's seeming ability no upon the consideration the monk is our teacher kalama when you yourselves know these things are bad these things are blamable these things are censured by the wise undertaken and observed these things lead to harm and ill abandon them the criterion for acceptance 10 come kalamas do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing no upon tradition no upon rumor no upon what is in a scripture no upon surmise no upon an axiom no upon specious reasoning no upon a bias towards a notion that has been pondered over no upon another's seemingly ability no upon the consideration the monk is our teacher kalamas when you yourselves know these things are good these things are not blamable these things are praised by the wise undertaken and observed these things lead to benefit and happiness enter on and abide in them absence of greed hate and delusion 11 what do you think kalamans does absence of greed appear in a man for his benefit or harm for his benefit venerable sir kalamans be not given to greed and be not overwhelmed and not vanquished mentally by greed this man does not take life does not steal does not commit adultery and does not tell lies he prompt another to to do likewise will that be conducive for his benefit and happiness for a long time yes venerable sir 12 what do you think kalamas does absence of hate appear in a man for his benefit or harm for his benefit venerable sir kalamas be not given to hate and be not overwhelmed and not vanquished mentally by hate this man does not take life does not steal does not commit adultery and does not tell lies he prompts another to to do likewise will that be conducive for his benefit and happiness for a long time yes venerable sir 13 what do you think kalamas does absence of delusion appear in a man for his benefit or harm for his benefit venerable sir kalamas be not given to delusion and be not overwhelmed and not vanquished mentally by delusion this man does not take life does not steal does not commit adultery and does not tell lies he prompts another to to do likewise will that by conducive for his benefit and happiness for a long time yes venerable sir 14 what do you think kalamas are these things good or bad good venerable sir blamable or not blamable not blamable venerable sir censured or praised by the wise praise venerable sir undertaken and observed do these things lead to benefit and happiness or not or 
how does it strike you undertaken and observed these things lead to benefit and happiness does it strike us here 15 therefore indeed did we say kalamas what was said thus come kalamas do not go upon what has been acquired by repeated hearing no upon tradition no upon rumor no upon what is in a scripture no upon surmise no upon an exam no upon specious reasoning no upon a bias towards notion that has been pondered over no upon another seeming ability no upon the consideration the monk is our teacher kalamas when you yourselves know these things are good these things are not blamable these things are praised by the wise undertaken and observed these things lead to benefit and happiness enter on and abide in them the four exalted dwellings 16 the disciple of the noble ones kalamas who in this way is devoid of counting devoid of ill will and deluded clearly comprehending and mindful dwells having pervaded with the thought of amity one quarter likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth so above below and across he dwells having pervaded because of the existence in it of all living beings everywhere the entire world with the great exalted boundless thought of amity that is free of hate or malice he lives having pervaded with the thought of compassion one quarter likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth so above below and across he dwells having pervaded because of the existence on it of all living beings everywhere the entire world with the great exalted boundless thought of compassion that is free of hate or malice he lives having pervaded with the thought of gladness one quarter likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth so above below and across he dwells having pervaded because of the existence in it of all living beings everywhere the entire world with the great exalted boundless thought of gladness that is free of hate or malice he lives having pervaded with the thought of equanimity one quarter likewise the second likewise the third likewise the fourth so above below and across he dwells having pervaded because of the existence in it of all living beings everywhere the entire world with the great exalted boundless thought of equanimity that is free of hate or malice the four solaces 17 the disciple of the noble one kalamas who has such a hate free mind such a malice free mind such an undefiled mind and such a purified mind is one by whom for solaces are found here and now suppose there is a hereafter and there is a fruit result of deeds done well or ill then it is possible that at the dissolution of the body after death i shall rise in the heavenly world which is possessed of the states of bliss this is the first solace found by him suppose there is no hereafter and there is no fruit no result of deed done well or ill yet in this world here and now 
free from hatred free from malice safe and sound and happy i keep myself this is the second soul is found by him suppose evil results befall an evil doer i however think of doing evil to none then how can ill results affect me who do no evil deed this is the third soul is found by him suppose evil results do not befall an evil doer then i see myself purified in any case this is the fourth soul is found by him the disciple of the noble one kalamas who has such a hate free mind such a malice free mind such an undefiled mind and such a purified mind is one by whom here and now these four solaces are found so it is blessed one so it is sublime one the disciple of the noble one venerable sir who has such a hate free mind such a malice free mind such an undefiled mind as such a purified mind is one by whom here and now four solaces are found suppose there is a hereafter and there is a fruit result of deeds done well or ill then it is possible that at the dissolution of the body after death i shall arise in the heavenly world which is possessed of the state of bliss this is the first soul is found by him suppose there is no hereafter and there is no fruit no result of deeds done well or ill yet in this world here and now free from hatred free from malice safe and sound and happy i keep myself this is the second soul is found by him suppose evil results befall an evil doer i however think of doing evil to none then how can ill result affect me who do no evil deed this is the third soul is found by him suppose evil results do not befall an evil doer then i see myself purified in any case this is the fourth soul is found by him the disciple of the noble ones venerable sir who has such a hate free mind such a malice free mind such an undefiled mind such an purified mind is one by whom here and now these four solaces are found marvelous venerable sir marvelous venerable sir as if venerable sir a person were to turn face upwards what is upside down or to uncover the concealed or to point the way to one who is lost or to carry a lamp in the darkness thinking those who have eyes will see visible objects so has the dhamma been set forth in many ways by the blessed one we venerable sir go to the blessed one for refuge to the dhamma for refuge and to the community of bhikkhus for refuge venerable sir may the blessed one regard us as followers who have gone for refuge for life from today anguttara nikaya 365